famous British developers Codemasters have released their first collection of games for the Evercade. 17 games are included on their first cartridge, and a few of them are real big hitters. Probably the biggest hit of the bunch is Sensible Soccer. If you were a kid growing up in the UK when this came out, you'd be hard pressed not to know about this game, it really was a big deal. Many different versions of Sensible Soccer came out, with the first being for the Amiga back in 1992. The title that has landed on this Evercade cartridge is the Sensible Soccer European Champions version, which was released in 1993 for the Sega Mega Drive. Now if you're not a football fan, naturally you might not be too interested in this game, but I'd say to give it a chance as it's very accessible as far as retro football games go. It's got an arcadey, pick up and play style, where you can learn the controls and setup very quickly. There are also some great customization options, along with some good humour thrown into the game for the teams in the Custom League. It really gives something to offer to those who aren't die-hard footy fans. Now on the other hand, if you are a die-hard footy fan, then you can have an absolute, well, field day with this game. I'll start off with all the different modes and options that are available to you from booting the game up. You can start a league, you can enter a cup tournament, you can play friendly matches, you can play as national teams, as club teams, or as custom teams. Then there are choices to be made for weather settings, match lengths, and so on. There's a wealth of options available to you right from the off. Let's say that you decide that you want to play for a league, well even more customization is available to you. You can decide how many teams to include, when the season should start, how many points a win gets you, and more. After that, you can pick what teams you want to include or leave out, it's all up to you. Back in the day, on a cartridge game, there was an awful lot of freedom to give the player, so you're only really limited by your own creativity. Want to pit the countries of Europe against each other in a league, and then you want to name it the Dr Pepper Euro League? Yep, that's fine, you can do that. Or maybe you want to have the clubs battle it out over the highly prestigious Pringles Cup. Well, you go right ahead, whatever you like, it's up to you. One final note to touch on with the customization is that the players in the game all have unofficial names, so you'll get, say, Elan Shira instead of Alan Shearer and such. I personally like the off-brand names and sometimes trying to work out who they're meant to be, but if you're not so keen and you've got the time to spare, you're free to replace all of them with legit player names through the options. There's lots of teams to choose from across the different leagues. The national teams only comprise European sides, so don't expect to see Brazil, Argentina, the USA and such in there, but there is still a lot of selection available. All the big players you'd expect are featured, but it's also fun seeing sides like Iceland and San Marino get in there too. The club teams include ones from all across Europe, although at times you might have to work out just who you're playing as. Cardiff for example, well that's obviously Cardiff City. Glasgow v Glaswegian though, well that'll be Rangers v Celtic. There's plenty to choose from in here again, there's just loads of options. Now let's get onto the gameplay itself. This is regarded as one of the best football games of all time and it's easy to see why. The gameplay is so fluid and easy to pick up and play, but definitely hard to master when the difficulty is cranked up. Everything moves smoothly and despite the players being tiny little sprites, it all just clicks. It's fast paced and it keeps the excitement up, especially if you're losing in the dying moments of a game. One of its best advantages in terms of how it plays is that the ball tends to stick to your feet a little, allowing you to go on some good runs before crossing or taking a shot. It's a small thing, but it just improves how everything handles so much more compared to other football games from the time, which can be a lot more sluggish, slow, or just generally imprecise, leading to all kinds of biffed shots or passes that just end up rolling out of play. Now when it comes to graphics, I'm sure you can look at the screen and realise that this is not the most graphically powerful football game ever released. It wasn't even cutting edge or even overly good looking for its release back 30 years ago. However, I would argue that everything in the game looks nice enough. The pitches, which can change with the seasons, they look sharp. The little players rushing around the pitch, they all look fine. There's no detail to them, but there's not meant to be. It reminds me of a Sabutio game, playing out digitally. The ball is easy enough to follow, and the camera keeps up with the action nicely. There's only the one view mode, but again, it just works, so there's not really a need for any other views or options on that front. The sound in the game, now that's an area I could see being a bit divisive. There's only a few different tracks included in the whole game. There's one that plays during the matches, and then there's one during the menu screens. I like both of them to be fair, and despite playing a ton of matches, I still wouldn't say I found the backing music for the matches to be annoying or grating. Somehow it just seemed to fit the gameplay. There's sound effects for goals, near misses, and everything to do with the referee. They all get the job done admirably enough. There's no commentary, but that was certainly not a standard for a game releasing back in 1993, and undoubtedly if any was included, it wouldn't have been particularly good anyway, so there's nothing to miss out on there.
There are three difficulty levels on offer here, beginner, normal and expert. Now obviously this comes down to how good you are at the game, but I found myself longing for maybe, say, five options instead of three. Depending on what team that you were playing as versus who you were up against, I would sometimes find the leap from beginner to normal or normal up to expert a real hard task. This isn't a massive complaint as practice really makes perfect on this game, and I've no issues with taking losses and getting better, but sometimes it felt like I'd go from a competitive level to getting absolutely trounced. Five levels may have helped to stagger how tough the opposition you face is and give a smoother learning curve overall. Now for about a month after first getting this cartridge, I played for a whole Dr Pepper Euroleague, I decided the winner of the Pringles Cup, and I played a good amount of multiplayer games. What I hadn't done was look into the custom teams option on the main menu. I had mistakenly assumed that that was where you'd go to customise the existing player and team names that were in the game, you know, if you wanted to change the England lineup. But oh no, I was totally wrong. The custom team section has an absolute boatload of bonkers teams that you can pit against each other. Let's take a look at how many are available to you here. If you want to pit zoo animals against sandwiches, then you can do it. You want to put marmalade up front to try and score past tiger? Sounds good. There's loads of funny teams that you can play with here. Fish Athletic, World Currency, Christmas City, Organs, Pizza Toppings. The possibilities are through the roof. And as you have no base knowledge of these teams, it can make things a lot more random and unpredictable in terms of team skill. Set up a league in the other modes, and we all know that France is very likely to be Estonia. Set one up here, and who can tell whether Flower Power or Fruit Town are the better side? The only disadvantage in this section comes in a similar vein, since you don't have any prior knowledge of these wacky teams, you don't know what kits they'll be playing in. Sometimes you can end up having a match where you're essentially in the same colours, and that can get pretty confusing. Time to sum up now, and Sensible Soccer is coming in with my first 10 out of 10 score on the channel. Everything about the game is charming and well thought out, the gameplay is brilliant, fast paced, addictive, it's easy for anyone to pick up and have a go at, while being difficult for those to master who want to devote the time to winning the leagues on the toughest difficulty. It's easily one of the best multiplayer games that you can have a bash at if you've got the Evercade VS console. The graphics and sound both worked for me, they didn't aim to reinvent the wheel, but it was all the better for it. The sheer number of options available to you for customising the teams, the leagues, the cups, and everything like that, they add tons of replay value to Sensible Soccer as well, and the game is full of humour and you can add to that yourself. So yeah, it's a great game, it's so great in fact, they even put this one on a stamp. The Royal Mail in the UK released a Sensible Soccer stamp a couple of years ago, and you know you're a big deal when the National Postage Service gets involved. The only drawbacks I have to mention is that the custom teams can sometimes end up facing each other in similar kits, which is hard to plan ahead for if you're in the league and it's difficult to try and prevent that from happening, and that some more difficulty levels would have been good to adjust to when cranking up the difficulty dial. Despite bringing up those two negatives though, I'm still awarding the 10 score as I'm nitpicking really, they aren't massive issues. So overall, it's a legendary game and a real crown in the jewel to have included in a collection on the Evercade console. I hope you've enjoyed this review of Sensible Soccer, if you have, why not throw me a like or even take the plunge and subscribe to Nickel Gaming for more Evercade reviews to come. Let me know your thoughts on Sensible Soccer in the comments and until next time, take it easy.